So Lucinda, please tell us what you're thinking at this time as the jockeys make their way down to the parade ring. So it was a unique race really because we'd had that uh, delay and we always bring our horses into the paddock last at a race like the Grand National just so that they're not wound up for too long. And Cara could come into the paddock, walked around at once and gone back out to the stables because there was going to be a delay. When it suddenly started, everything started going again, the huge sense of relief that the race is going to be on. Uh, you get anxious because you want the horse to go well and all of a sudden, all the time that you've spent getting the horse ready, preparing it for this day is about to happen. And I will say it's funny with uh, being a trainer because your time of uh, and what you can do to make things different is coming to an end. Now it's out of your control and it's all up to Derek. So we're very lucky with Derek. I know him very, very well. I know that he's normally the last jockey out of the weighing room. So uh, we can wait, wait quietly for him. But um, he has his own ideas about how to ride the race. He'll have gone over it in his mind. That's his job. Uh, and between him and Scoo, they've decided how, how they want to ride Karak. But uh, in truth, anyone that knows Karak Rambler will know that it's Karak that half decides it. He's, he never likes to start the race too fast. He always likes to hold himself up a bit and finish with a strong, a strong run. So uh, that was sort of our, sort of our aim. Um, be as handy as we could do, but but really we know there's no point forcing him. So uh, the idea was always to, to to drop him in a little bit. As you said, you tend to send your horses out for big races last. Is Korak very straightforward on a race day? Yeah, we. Um, I've got a fantastic girl that looks that helps does all the travelling for me called Jamie Duff, and uh, she's worked for me for probably too many years that we both want to admit. But um, she's. She works it out. I totally and utterly trust her to, to decide the timings and stuff, but uh, it's just easier to, to bring them out later. It just stops them winding up. And I think that's right for every horse. I don't think you want them to get too overexcited. And um, to have them calm and walking around the paddock beforehand, that's, that's sort of what we want with every horse, is just to have them happy and, and, and confident. Um, and that's, it's, it's a unique place, Aintree. There's a fantastic atmosphere, as you can imagine, and you don't want the horses to get too lit up. We now look to the start where they began a great gallop. But were you expecting Derek to take up such a prominent position? Yeah, so when before the start, we sort of thought, well, Karak will be dropped in. But actually at the start, he was quite handy. Uh, and right down the middle, which is perfect. Um, I have to admit, personally, I didn't see very much of it. Because as soon as they said, and they're off, I just burst into tears. It was hopeless. I was sobbing and, and crying just... Uh, just all the emotion and the, the tension that had built up suddenly came to the fore. So, um, and I think when there, there are quite a few horses in there, you're just dead keen to know where your horse is. You're just trying to watch where he is. Um, and I was delighted that he was close to the front than I thought he was going to be. I thought he was going to be outpaced even going to the first. So he, he, um, he was approaching the first. Then we have all the worries. Is he going to jump the Grand National Fences? He hadn't had the benefit of jumping around the beach or chase or anything. And we had schooled him at home over fences that we thought were like the entry fences. But Karak's such a strong character, I just wanted him to enjoy it. And uh, so trying to watch him go to the first fence through my tears uh, was quite a challenge. But anyway, he seemed to jump it perfectly. So once he's over the first and he settled at a decent pace, did the tears stop and are you able to relax at all? Oh, it's just, it's that anxiety of just hoping that nothing bad happens. That, that's the thing, it's just fear of anything going wrong. And it was funny because by the fourth fence, I knew that he'd enjoyed it. He jumped a little bit big at the first couple and then suddenly at the fourth, he sort of got it. And from there on, I think he really enjoyed it. Um, it was amazing watching it because Derek seemed to have, it was sort of a, 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 a bubble of space in front of him. So everywhere he went, there was, there was space. Everywhere he, the, the horse could see the fence before it happened. And of course, these fences are really unique. They're having to jump on turns. They're jumping big fences with ditches that, that don't look like anything they've ever jumped before. Um, and it was great because Karak actually could see it and, and work it out for himself. Um, I do just remember sobbing still all the way through it. And I very kindly uh, I had a gentleman next to me who was sort of half telling me that he was there and that he was close up and, and he had a chance. But uh, until you actually see it yourself and appreciate it yourself, you don't believe it. I feel the race really starts to pick up when they get to Beechersbrook on the final lap. What are you wanting Derek to do at this time tactically and where do you want him to position himself? 
Yeah, it's always the case with Korak. It's kind of the relationship between the two of them, between Derek and Korak. And um, I, I knew that the horse had gotten to this most lovely rhythm and was jumping and seemed to be really enjoying it. And he always had, as I say, that bubble of space in front of him. And when he jumped the um, canal turn, he came past horses and I thought, gosh, I hope he doesn't get to the front too soon. How can I be thinking that? So then further on, we he's coming to the second last and I could just see how well he was going. I could see Derek half takes takes a pull after the second last and he was obviously thinking, I don't want to hit the front too soon either, but you know, this is the national. And uh, when Nicky Henson's horse was in front, I, I thought to myself, brilliant, I, I really like Nicky. If he, if he wins the national, I'll be delighted for him. And suddenly I just saw Carrot Rambler's white nose suddenly coming up beside him and I thought, oh dear, we're going to be in front in a minute. Anyway, he jumped the last and uh, just the excitement of, uh, I suppose it's everything that I dreamed about. I, I dreamt that he was going to hit the front, but what I didn't know was if anything else was going to be able to get past him. And Scoo's father used to always say when he, he rode in the national that you shouldn't pick up your stick before the elbow. You should just ride them hands and heels to the elbow. Once you hit the elbow, then you can use your stick. And uh, I think Karak decided that Derek shouldn't use his stick at all, because once he used his stick, he put his head up a bit. Towards the line, Derek Fox for Lucinda Russell, the one for Arthur combination. They're going to win it again with Korak Rambler. Can we say it was never in doubt? It was in doubt. It was always in doubt. And with Fenillier uh, closing past, of course it was in doubt. But um, I was just, just delighted. And that feel, if I, if I was crying beforehand, before you know, as the race started, I certainly was afterwards. It was just the huge release of emotion and um, just thankfulness that he's got round safe and and that he's just won one of the greatest steeplechases in the world. And once he's finally crossed the line and he's home safe, how did your emotions change? Oh, it's just the huge relief. And, you know, from winning the National the time before with, with one for Arthur, I know how much it means to the owners. And I just wanted them to have the best day ever. And uh, it's just so exciting for them and for them to enjoy every minute. Because actually when you win it, you, your mind goes a bit blank. You go into a sort of existential being and that it's it's really it's a very odd thing you get very lightheaded um, and everything happens very quickly and I just wanted them to enjoy it I wanted obviously we went and thanked the horse and I was so grateful to Korak but then I'm grateful to the owners I'm grateful to them for having him and for letting us take him for the national and uh, I just want them to have the best time ever Live racing now on racingtv.com.